This is a KTC special report honoring Governor Kathleen Blanco. I'm Dave Baker and I'm Katie Lopez and over the next three days, former Governor Kathleen Blanco will be honored for her dedication to the state. The series of commemorations are starting now in downtown Baton Rouge with an interfaith service at St. Joseph's Cathedral. The procession of clergy, pallbearers and family members are making their way inside the church. Archbishop of New Orleans Gregory Amal will start off the ceremony. Former staffers of Blanco along with state and religious leaders will share prayers and memories of the first and only female governor. After the celebration of life, her body will then be brought to the Capitol at 1230. An honor guard will carry her casket up the front steps where she was sworn in as governor in 2004. She'll be met with a military salute by the National Guard and then lie in state at uh, the Great Hall. Blanco is the fourth Louisiana governor to lie in state at the Capitol. Now she will be received by Senate President John Alario Jr., House Speaker Taylor Barra, and by her husband Raymond and mother Lucille. Now visitors will be allowed to pay their respects between 1 and 6 p.m. If you're planning to go, you must enter through the ground floor of the Capitol. Seating is limited. Kathleen Babineau Blanco was Louisiana's first and only female governor. She was also the first female state representative from Lafayette and the first woman elected to the Public Service Commission. And she's returning to the Capitol building for the last time today. Now she died Sunday after a year long struggle with a rare eye cancer at the age of 76. She survived by her husband Raymond Blanco, her 99 year old mother and five living children, Carmen, Monique, Nicole, Pilar and Ray. Her son Ben died in 1997 when he was 19 in an industrial accident. She also leaves behind 13 grandchildren. Now, three days of events for the former governor begin with the interface service uh, in downtown Baton Rouge uh, Cathedral. She will then lie in state in the rotunda of the Louisiana State Capitol from 1 until 6 tonight. Visitation continues Friday in Lafayette at St. John the Evangelist Cathedral. The mass of Christian burial will begin at 1030 on Saturday. Now she served one term as governor, beating Bobby Jindal uh, in the election, and she served from 2004 to 2008. She served in the State House for five years, the State Utility Regulatory Agency for seven years, and as Lieutenant Governor for eight years. And she was born in Iberia Parish in 1942, the first of seven children living in Koto. Now, she attended the elementary school there and graduated from Mount Carmel High, earning a degree in business education from, from what was then the University of Southwestern Louisiana. That was in 1964. She taught business at Brobridge High School and then she was a stay at home mom. Now, in the last few months of her life, Governor Blanco received a number of awards from people across the state. In June, the New Orleans Saints inducted Blanco into the team's Hall of Fame and presented her with the Joe Gemelli Fleur de Lis Award. Now, Blanco was instrumental in the Superdome's post Katrina reconstruction and the return of the Saints to the stadium after the storm. Saints owner Gail Benson is among the people speaking at today's service in Blanco's honor. And in early June, the state renamed a portion of the future I-49, the Kathleen Babineau Blanco Highway. Now that stretch of US-167 and US-90 runs through the heart of Lafayette and Iberia parishes, the two places she called home. And just two weeks ago, the Retired State Employees Association inducted Blanco into its Hall of Fame. Blanco was not there to receive the award. Her husband Raymond accepted on her behalf. The award recognizes Blanco's dedication to public services and state employees. Returns to this cathedral, which was her home parish, while she governed the state through times of joy and peace and through turbulent times of hardship and challenge and Hurricane Katrina. Governor Blanco never gave in to desolation, but rather renewed her spirit through her great trust in God's providence to make up for what was lacking in human power and easy answers. Today, we welcome Kathleen home again to this cathedral. Very grateful for her service and her strength, which gave hope to the people of our state at times when hope was needed the most. And we come to bid our earthly farewell to her and to thank God for her life, her faith, her family, and the leadership she has provided. My friends, we also come together to offer condolences and prayers, especially to you, Coach, Kathleen's faithful and beloved husband. You stood by one another day in and day out. 
and to Kathleen's children, Carmen, Monique, Nicole, Raymond Jr., and Pilar, spouses and grandchildren, and in a very special way to Kathleen's mother, Lucille, and members of the Blanco family. We know that you come here today to this sacred place with broken hearts, and please know that we lift you to the Lord, that you will know his comfort and his peace. Even though Kathleen's death was expected, death is always a surprise. We're grateful to you as the Blanco family for the loving care that you have given to our sister throughout her life and especially during these last years as she prepared to go home to God and also to be joined again to her deceased son, Ben. To Governor and Mrs. Edwards, state and federal officials, as you served with Governor Blanco as a colleague and a partner in the important work of governance, we pray today that the blessings of your common work together will remain for you a blessed and lasting memory. And we pray that today we'll also urge you to continue, as you do, to do what is right, to love justice, to walk humbly with God, as Governor Blanco did. To all the members of the various religious communities, Christian churches, and other religions, with gratitude, we join together today in common prayer to the one God. And we pray, of course, first for Kathleen and also for our country and for our state. My sisters and brothers in the Lord, we pray with all of you. We pray for all of you who mourn, lifting up our sister to the mercy and the love of God, which sustained her so deeply throughout her life. May Kathleen and all of you know the peace of God which is beyond our understanding. And may Kathleen find eternal life, yes, eternal life, with all the saints in glory. Please stand. Let us pray. God of endless ages, from one generation to the next, you have been our refuge and our strength. Before the mountains were born or the earth came to be, you are God. Have mercy now on your servant, Kathleen, whose long life was spent in your service Give her a place in your kingdom where hope is firm for all who love and rest is sure for all who serve. We ask this, O oh God, in your name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 23, first in Hebrew and then the English. Adonai roi lo exar benot deshe yarbitseni almei menuchot yenahaleni. Nafshi yeshovev yancheni bemagle tzedek lema'an shemo. Gam kielech begeit salmavet loi rara ki ataim adi, shiftecha u mishantecha hema yenachamuni. 
Ta'aroch lefanai shuchan neged soarai, dishanta vashemen roshi, kosi rivaya. Achtov achesed yirdefuni kol yemei chayai, veshavti bevet adonai leorech yamim. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A mother's love, devoted, protective, ever-present, ever-uplifting, it is nurturing and never-ending. Kathleen Babineau Blanco felt a mother's love from the woman who gave her life. She shared a mother's love with her children and her grandchildren and all of those who worked with her and for her, and she had a mother's love for her Louisiana. She celebrated our joy, cried when we hurt, dreamed big dreams, and worked tirelessly to improve our reality. Like the mother pelican on our state's flag, she was willing to sacrifice for her state. Today, we gather to celebrate her life. A wife, daughter, mother, grandmother, teacher, trailblazer. For the first time in the history of our state, Louisiana called on one of her daughters to lead and lead she did. I am honored to share the experience of so many in this cathedral today, having had the opportunity to work with and for Kathleen Babineau Blanco. During that experience, I learned a lot of things. I learned about Blanco values that run deep. I learned about Blanco time, which is more of a feeling than a number on a clock. <laughs> I learned about Blanco blue, which we wore proudly. And I learned about that Blanco force of nature we love called coach. Kathleen was an advocate for education. She believed it was within her grasp to move people from poverty to prosperity through access to quality education, health care, and employment. For many of us, the last time we gathered in this cathedral together was a time of celebration to celebrate her inauguration, a new dawning. Today, we gather to celebrate a life well-lived as her beautiful son has set. It was a son that provided light in good times and comfort and warmth in challenging times. She played the hand which she was dealt and often made the most of it. When she was criticized for having a heavy hand and negatively referred to as Queen Bee, she joyfully embraced that title, and off we went to buy Queen Bee jewelry. Persistent and persuasive, when she called in a staffer to talk, to chat, no matter how weary you were, she could get a yes out of you, even if you had practiced and were determined to say no. She believed in good, common-sense solutions. She was a proud, proud penny pincher, and she believed in facts and data and sound arguments and good policy. The kind of work that the policy center that bears her name at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette now carries the torch to advance. As a former teacher, she set out to improve our educational opportunity in our state, bringing higher education and teacher pay to new highs. 
She created Louisiana's need-based aid program because she believed that college was important and she said that education was poverty's mortal enemy. Kathleen gave a voice to those who were often not heard or considered or seen. With little consideration for political consequences because in her world, good politics was about what was good for her people. She was a servant leader in every way. In my heart, I always understood God was preparing me for unknown challenges, and of course, those challenges came, she said. God puts you where he wants you to be. Her faith is her legacy. It anchored her in times of storm with the death of her son, Ben, as she showed her a state recovery from not one but two mega storms back to back and it helped her to face her own mortality, which she did with grace and courage and a deep sense of peace. It was just like Kathleen to share her news of her illness in a way that rallied Louisiana, this time to prayer. She did not say in her letter to Louisiana, I'm in the fight for my life and I urgently need your prayers. No. Her letter was first and foremost a thank you to the people of Louisiana. It was a testament to her belief in the power of prayer and a simple request. I would deeply appreciate it, she said, if you should see fit that you offer prayers on behalf of myself as well as all others fighting to survive life-threatening illnesses. Not a request solely about herself, not a letter written to seek sympathy, but a letter meant to lift the testimony of people and the power of prayer. When I visited her again last week, though she was weakened from her cancer fight, she smiled and opened her arms so that I could receive my last great big hug. She quizzed me about my daughter and my work, and of course I had to remind her that I was there to check on her and coach and her family, not to talk about me but that was Kathleen, always interested in everyone who visited her. On August 18th, at 2.54 p.m., Louisiana's 54th governor was called home. She had hung in there to celebrate her 55th wedding anniversary with Coach and his birthday. She had had an opportunity to spend special moments with her children, her family, and her vast array of friends. It is said that parents give us two things, roots and wings. Like a mighty oak, Kathleen has left us with deep roots, the kind that are so common in Louisiana. Roots that ground our work, anchor our moral compass, and tie us to a place that we are so proud to call home. She has also given us wings to soar to new heights, encouraging us to lift as we climb calling us to be torchbearers for service, advocates for education, and champions for children. I am certain that Louisiana is a better place because Kathleen Babineau Blanco served and sacrificed and lived and loved. Thank you, Governor, for giving it your all. We love you. We miss you. May she rest in peace.
read to you from the Holy Word of God found in the Quran, the Holy Book of Muslims. Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Al-Rahman al-Rahim. Malaykeh yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka na'sta'in. Ihdina sarat al-Mustaqim. Sarat haladina and amta alayhim, karil makutubi alayhim, wala dali. Amen. The English translation is In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to God, the cherisher, sustainer of all the worlds, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. Thee alone do we worship, thee alone we ask for help. Show us the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast favored, not the path of those who earn thy anger, nor of those who go astray. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Then the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, 
and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did you see a hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you do not for the least of these, you do not do for me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Here ends the reading. The governance of power. Power is a woman who looks directly into the camera, says a defining moment in her life is the loss of a son. Power is a woman who always writes her own script. Power is a woman who takes a 15-year turn to raise children. Corman, then Monique, Nicole, Ray, Pilar, and beloved Ben. Power is a woman who cares about the health of others first. Power is a woman who teaches and then teaches teachers. She teaches them to build schools first from the inside. Power is a woman who falls in love with the one Blanco she knows she'll spend the rest of her life with and does. Power is a woman fearless of foreign tongues and places and people. Power is a woman never hedging when it comes to her God, how she will walk with him and talk to him and rest in him. Power is a woman who can say, I am a powerful woman, and I don't say that because I was governor. She says, I'm not powerful because I wield power then or now, but because I claim power, and I claim that power to define my personal happiness. She says this to a group of students at the beginning of a new phase of their lives a last phase in hers. She says to them, I suggest you give yourself that gift too. All power comes from big-heartedness and a plan, from hope and faith. And she's saying to us today, give yourself that gift too.
Distinguished guests, former Governor Jindal, most especially Mrs. Babineau, Coach, the entire Blanco family. Thank you for the honor of being able to celebrate and pay tribute to a great woman. Someone I was fortunate enough to know, to know well, to call a mentor and a friend. Two years before my election as governor in 2015, and long before many thought I could win, Governor Blanco invited our family to Lafayette to have supper so that my kids would hear from her children what to expect from life in the governor's mansion. And I don't share this with you to highlight the election or her clairvoyance. Rather, I share it with you to highlight her generous spirit. She personally spent time with each of our children. And Coach made a significant contribution too. He turned me on to a really good old fashioned that night. <laughs> that night she also spoke to me about the need to focus on the least fortunate and the most vulnerable in Louisiana. And we had the gospel reading from Matthew 25 just a moment ago. She didn't cite that passage, but I knew from the end of that conversation that that passage had greatly influenced her because she spoke about those people. She spoke about the least among us. Lord, when did I see you hungry? thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, or in prison. And this deep and abiding love that she had for all of the people made her a special leader, authentic, consistent, and sincere. We all know that Kathleen Babineau Blanco was the first woman to hold the office of governor of Louisiana and she certainly will not be the last. Kathleen's faith, life experiences, and genuine concern for others allowed her to connect on a deeply personal level with nearly every person she met. And I suspect that every person here believes that Kathleen knew them and loved them individually. And you are all right, she did. She was a true Cajun, born in Iberia Parish. She was a mother who knew the great joy of raising six children. But at the same time, she was also a mother who knew the unimaginable heartbreak of losing a child. A devout Catholic, she leaned on her faith for guidance and for comfort. Like all of us, I suspect, she was the sum of her cumulative experiences, but she was also much more. She was a stay-at-home mom, a teacher, a public service commissioner, a lieutenant governor, and yes, she was the 54th governor of the great state of Louisiana. And she was a good and decent person who understood people because she understood life, its beauty, and its hardships. And as we all know, she led Louisiana through some of its darkest days. And as a believer in divine providence, she would tell you that she knew she was put in that position for a reason. And I believe that. I also believe that she was meant to be governor of this great state for many other reasons. There was one group who needed her passionate and compassionate leadership more than any other. Louisiana's children. Some might say that being a teacher or being a mother is what sparked her love of children. Certainly that is the case. But I know that her devotion to the well-being of the children of Louisiana ran much deeper. She saw every child as a child of God, as a brother, or sister in Christ. And accordingly, she felt the responsibility to care for them, each of them, as if they were her own. And I think it's fitting that just before I got up to speak, the children's choir 
perform this little light of mine because that is what she wanted for every child, for their light to shine into a brighter future, a future where the quality of their education did not depend upon the zip code that they lived in, a future where no parent needed to wonder how to pay for their child's doctor's visit, a future where a child, even from the most modest of means and the most challenging of circumstances, can grow up in a world filled with opportunity, including the opportunity to be governor. On July 2nd, Don and I attended a ceremony in Lafayette to name a section of U.S. Highway 90 the Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco Highway. It was certainly a fitting tribute, and it was a festive occasion. And she and Coach were so excited about that event. And a couple of weeks ago, I returned to Lafayette to see her at St. Joseph Hospice, and things were much different. But as soon as I approached her, she opened her eyes, looked right at me, and asked me if I had another highway to name for her. <laughs> she then smiled and she laughed. You know, in addition to her sense of humor and her contagious optimism, one of the things that I will cherish most about Kathleen is that she never stopped fighting for the people of this state. For example, she knew that their well-being is intrinsically tied to the vitality of critical institutions such as our universities and hospitals. So while literally fighting for her life, she, with coach by her side, also fought to adequately fund the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and University Hospital in Lafayette and similar institutions all across the state of Louisiana when the fiscal cliff, when the fiscal cliff threatened their funding. Kathleen once said, my values, our values, aren't about pointing fingers. They're about offering a helping hand. That, I believe, is the very embodiment of what it means to be a true Louisianan, and she certainly was. Like you, I wish we could have had her sage counsel and loving generosity for many more years. I wish it for the state. I wish it for me, and I wish it for the incredible family that she and Coach created. But let's commit here and now to focus not on the void created by her passing, but to forever treasure the blessing that she was, and let's give thanks to God for the many beautiful ways she enriched our lives and our state. Perhaps the greatest gift any of us can ask for is to be able to say at the end of our days, as the powerful hymn goes, it is well, it is well with my soul. Kathleen had that opportunity, and it was well. She found peace. And I hope and pray that part of her peace was knowing that she could count on us to continue her legacy of caring for the people of this beautiful state that she so proudly served and that she so dearly loved. So let's honor her by doing just that. God bless you. Let us turn to the Lord, whose providence holds in compassion our sister Kathleen. Let all of us here remember Kathleen with love and gratitude. We will pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
for the people of every land and nation who seek God with a sincere heart that they may find their heart's desire in peace and freedom, we pray to the Lord. For the people of the United States of America, by God's strength, may our nation remain faithful to the values of justice, freedom, integrity, and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. For all exiles and refugees, for those who come to this country seeking freedom and opportunity, for people of every culture, language, and way of life who call Louisiana home, we pray to the Lord. For the people of Louisiana, may we live on this grace land, faithful to our blessings and committed to the common good. We pray to the Lord. For the men and women who served with Governor Blanco on behalf of the citizens of this state, may they remain true to their calling to service with integrity and honor. We pray to the Lord. For a deeper spirit of reconciliation among people of different races and religions, for a unity of heart in addressing the intractable problems of our society, that all people may be lifted up by the hope of the world made new. We pray to the Lord. For, for all who are powerless and who live on the bed of pain, may their hope not be forgotten. We pray to the Lord. Lord on behalf of our Evangeline, Kathleen Blanco, to the service men and women from the state of Louisiana who stand in defense of our country in places near and far away, for all of them who have given their lives so that others might live in freedom, for the generations who have lived in this state and who now sleep in eternity, we pray to the Lord. And in silence, we offer to the God of us all our prayers of need. Gracious God, we are grateful for the long life of our sister, Kathleen Babineau Blanco, now caught up in your immense love. We thank you for her witness and service. She who was strong in faith, discerning in proclamation, courageous in witness, and persistent in good deeds. 
May she know the joy of seeing you face to face, O God, and live with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our recessional hymn. It can be found on page 650 in your red hymnal, Amazing Grace, page 650. We will be singing verses 1 and 5.
definitely some emotional moments there. So, of course, you saw, you know, Raymond Blanco, her husband, coach, mm -hmm. uh, the flag uh, being given to him. Uh, reflection number one, Dr. K uh, Kim Hunter-Reed. Uh, and then one thing that kind of kind of I saw in here was the governance of power, the poet Lorette, uh, Laureate uh, Daryl Bork and talking about how powerful of a woman, but it was a different kind of power. Not it's because, not like wielding your power right, as a leader. Not because I'm governor and I'm a leader. Right, but, but as just, a mother. And then, mm -hmm. of course, you know, with, with her son, losing her son yeah. back in 1997, which is incredibly powerful to be able to get through that. And then Sam Jones referring to her as our Evangeline. I yes. thought that was beautiful there. Yes. And uh, guys, we do want to remind you um, that we will have a special show tomorrow at 5 o'clock um, completely dedicated to the life and legacy of Governor Kathleen Blanco. A lot of visitation that's going to be going on. Her body is now going to be moved over to the state capitol. She'll be received there as they move it up the 49 states of our state capitol. And she'll be in the Great Hall lying in state from 1 until 6 o'clock. If you are still planning to go to Baton Rouge, that's going to be going on until 6 o'clock. And the family has also said that anybody that is still in line at 6 o'clock, uh, they will be allowed to go through. So. Right. If six o'clock comes around, whoever is out there uh, and over in Baton Rouge, we all know that, it, you know, sometimes, especially when you have a huge thing like this going mm -hmm. on, maneuvering the traffic and getting around. So we do have some uh, things that you may need to know about. Right. And then um, also, guys, uh, if you're going to go ahead and go tomorrow, it's going to be a uh, visitation will also be held in Lafayette uh, tomorrow and Saturday, St. John's Cathedral. It's going to open at 1230 and they'll be open until eight o'clock tomorrow. The Divine Mercy Chapel will uh, be recited at three and a prayer will be held at six o'clock. Of course, we're going to have special coverage tomorrow at five o'clock. Our entire five o'clock show will be dedicated to uh, the life and legacy of uh, Governor Kathleen Blanco. So you want to tune in for that. And then also on KTC.com, we have so many different stories. We have different um, uh, statements from uh, former governors, uh, folks that were in the legislature, United States Senate, Louisiana Senate, and the and the House of Representatives. And of course, uh, today that's going to be going on until six o'clock. She'll be lying in state at the state capitol. There are some pictures there you can see of her in the legislature as well as with her family too. So as we're going to leave you now, that was special coverage of an interfaith service over in Baton Rouge. Again, we'll have more coming up tomorrow.